remember when I did not understand how I used to stand under all the fools' rules running these lands. I had my head in the sand and I was asleep. Now I learn a little more every day and I'm waking the sheep. Gonna say it out loud, say it proud, get it out Cause I'm burning inside, cannot hide it no more I'm a rack on tattoo Yeah, I'm a rack on tattoo Oh, I'm a rack on tattoo All the people in the chat room singing Oh, I'm a rack on tattoo One more time, one more time now Good evening and welcome to Monday's edition of Raconteurs News. Uh, we are broadcasting live. We're on uh, we're on uh, Facebook Live. Uh, we're broadcasting live on Spreaker.com forward slash users forward slash Raconteurs News, where you can find all the archives as well. And also we're on Raconteurs News. Dot com. I hope you've had a great weekend, and uh, if you've had a listen to uh, yesterday's preview show, you'll know what's uh, what well, what we've got coming up this week. Um, uh, it's uh, it's going to be a good one. Um, but I just wanted to. I've got this. I just wanted to share this with you. I mean, this was me today. And this is what my life's like, right? I had to go today. I had to go to uh, North Wales. I went to a couple of places in North Wales. I went to. Um, uh, a place just oh where did I go? I went to Connors Key anyway, and uh, then I went to um, I went to a nuclear facility, um, which I'll tell you another story about that. Getting in and out of that, that were uh, it, it's a place where they um, where they uh, they they make uh, lithium, not lithium. What's the stuff? Uh, oh god. Anyway, you know what I mean. It's all it's all dead uh, radioactive. But anyway, I got up this morning and I I was sweating. Um. I was sweating terribly and uh, I felt a bit, I felt a bit poorly and uh, I did have to go to the toilet a couple of times. Um, but then uh, I set off for North Wales this morning and I got to, uh, I got to, I got to uh, Manchester to the, to, I don't know if anybody knows it, it's at the other end of the Snake Pass and then you get to the top and there's the, the roundabout that takes you on to the M67 and then there's a McDonald's at the side of it. Well, I went into the McDonald's because I was busting for a piss absolutely busting for a piss went in there bought a cup of coffee because i feel like guilty if i've uh, if i've ever gone in somewhere to use the facilities and bought a cup of coffee um and anyway off off i toddle i toddle again down the m67 get onto m60 near stockport and you know what it's like in the morning on on there on the m60 near stockport it's bumper to bumper and i am busting for a piss but, and I mean busting for a piss. <laughs> so, what I decided to do is I tipped my coffee away out of the uh, out of the, the McDonald's cup. I take my coat off. I uh, put the coat over my lap. I take my trousers down, and I'm sat there in the queue having a piss. And of course, just as I, oh, you know, it's like when you've got a, a, a urine infection, or maybe you don't if you've not if you've not fucking if you've not ever had one, then you are a fortunate individual. But yeah, it, it, and it was really painful. Anyway, of course, as soon as I started pissing, the traffic started moving. So I turned to my fucking, the, to, to my left and sat next to me is my uh, my father-in-law. Um, now it's, the, the, I mean, this is nothing to him. It's, uh, but I'm saying to him, oh, I'll get moving, but you've got to steer. I'm still holding on track. You've got to steer. Now, my father-in-law is terrible. He's tried driving over his years, and he just can't do it. And he was all over the place. For, to the steering wheel. If I'm going to get fucking pulled here, like with me dick in a McDonald's thing, that I've not even took the little, you know, the little bean that you get on the side of it. I've not even took that off. And, I, oh, I, oh, just, just unbelievable and i had to stop a couple more times on the way to north wales and when i got to north wales i got to the place that i was uh, going to 
and I went, listen, I need to use your toilet. And I went in and I, I, uh, I deposited a, um, a, a number of, um, uh, of items in there. And then I came out and I realized it wasn't the company that I was supposed to be going to. It were a different one. They'd moved away from there about a year ago and I'd not been since. So uh, I, I had to apologize uh, for what I'd left in the toilet. I mean, this is, there's, there's tons more to this, but uh, I, I think I'll, I think I'll, uh, I'll probably get you in installments, which is what it we're doing to me today, uh, installments every couple of minutes. So anyway, bearing that in mind, and I might have to be running off to the toilet at any point, it's good that we are mob handed tonight. So uh, I'm joined by regular co-hosts. Uh, we've got Paul, Paul, Bills of Exchange, Webster. We've got Aid, uh, Captain Cliche, Hardy, and we've got Andy, not so young. How you doing, fellas? All right. Yeah, I'm good, mate. I've, I've got my sticky tape ready, and I'm ready to rub my balls at any point. <laughs> Brilliant. What about you two guys, uh, Paul and Andy? I'm good, mate. I'm uh, home from work, thankfully. Uh, but been a good day, and uh, I'm looking forward to this one. And, Andy? Yeah, I, me, I'm all good. Um, but uh, we just got a couple of announcements to make. Um We've do, been doing a bit of work with... I've, I've been doing a bit of work with Steve Mira today. And uh, we've got our sign-up link for On Stella, the new social media platform um, that Steve came on and talked about the other week. So anyone who, who wants to sign up for that, if you go to onstella.com and sign up with the promo code RACON, R-A-C-O-N, all caps, and then... Uh, that will um, hopefully you, you get something for signing up with that promo card. I'm not sure, quite sure what you get because the the website's in beta at the minute. But when it all goes live, we'll all be able to meet up there. Looking forward to that because they actually reward you for uploading content and um, for putting original stuff on there. So that'll be interesting to see how that goes. But before we carry on with the show, I have got a public safety announcement that we've got to make. And we've got to make it before we go any further. It's a serious warning to all the chat room users, so but please take note. She believes us in the chat. She believes and he's after a wife. And he's after a wife. Back to you, Jace. I didn't hear that. I know it. I've heard it, though, because I said to you, absolutely superb. Thanks for that, Heath. Um, just in case anybody didn't know, we'll give the credit to Heath because it is his, uh, it is his invention. Uh, but uh, hi to everybody who's in the chat room. We've got plenty of people. We've got uh, quite a few people are watching us on Facebook Live as well. Hello to you, all you people on Facebook Live. But please join in, and if you can go to uh, the website as well, you can join in on the uh, on the chat room as well. So uh, plenty of ways to to interact with us. It, it is uh, you that makes the show. So. Um, we're just uh, four northern angry blokes. Well, not angry. We're not angry, are we? That's that'd be wrong. But we're uh, we're four northern blokes uh, that, that that know what we think. We we like what we say. And we say what we bloody well like. <laughs> so, Andy, why don't you introduce our guest for this evening? Because uh, I know that uh, you you and uh, is it you and Paul have, have have mentioned this guy on the show before, and I think we had a response from somebody in the, in the chat room who said nobody lives like that. Uh, but, <laughs> Uh, I know you vociferously uh, defended defended our guest, who certainly does live like that. So uh, either Paul or Andy, uh, whichever one, uh, why don't you introduce our guest? Yeah, thanks, Jason. Um, yeah, tonight uh, we'll be talking to Owen live from Portugal. And Owen is indeed the gentleman that um, Paul men mentioned on air without mentioning his name when he said about his um, fabulous off-grid lifestyle. And uh, somebody, I can't remember the exact words, but somebody said, you're talking shit, Webby, nobody lives like this. So uh, a very warm raconteur's grumpy old bastard's welcome to Owen. How do, how do you like okay. to tell us a little bit about yourself, where you come from, and how you got started on this particular path? Because it's been quite an adventure, I gather. Certainly has. Good evening, guys. How are you all doing? The uh, four northern men, four northern white men. I must say, I'll uh, add, a, add a bit of darkness to that. I'll say the northern black man here in Portugal. How's that? But yeah, um, it's strange really because 
it was it was just a minute than... just a minute owen did did you say you were black <laughs> oh did fuck I... me i never <laughs> noticed man i wish you'd told me before <laughs> <laughs> no it's just for fun for fun look this, this, this thing behind me the reason why i came out so yeah uh, my health was diagnosed with um ibs and crohn's disease um one of the one of the benefit things one of the things that can help you a lot is uh, obviously cannabis and the weed um and obviously over here the laws are uh, um it's been decriminalized over here you still can get arrested for it but it has been decriminalized over here but it, it means that i can smoke freely here i can take cannabis in whatever form and i can you know say that my, my uh, crohn's is in remission i've, I've not suffered for, for a while but um yeah we decided to get out of the uk decided to get out the right race um like yeah, it, it's just I think Big Daddy mentioned it the other night. He's wanting to get out of the matrix, get out of the system, you know. Um, and Portugal, uh, the people, the place, everything, everything about it is amazing. Um, yeah, the house, the house itself. I'll give you a quick look if that's all right. Come up, quick look. I can't I don't know if I could turn the camera around, but we have got all these big bank of solar panels. I don't know if you can see them. Just tell me if you can see them. It's all the solar panels that's up there. Yeah, I can see them. And then we've got one for the hot water there as well, if you can see that one on the roof. I don't know if you can, because I can't see it. And then down at the bottom here, if you see a little grey box behind me, just behind over my shoulder. That's our borehole for our water. And then the other little box there, just by the junk, is the ground source heat pump. Uh, so yeah, we don't, don't pay for, well, I certainly don't pay for electricity, don't pay for water. Uh, don't pay for, well, I do pay for gas, but that's a, a gas canister, like a camping gas bottle. And uh, council tax, 50 quid a year. So, yeah. So, if you compare that to the UK and the cost of living, I can, well, I don't know, I don't know if I did show you. That's to grow me on fruit and fruit and veg down there. I already have, I already have an orchard over there. Um, plenty of oranges and, and fruit, everything. So, yeah, life, life, is, life is really nice in the sunshine, the vitamin D. That's uh, good as well. Oh, so, yeah, this is my nutshell. That's it. <laughs> Goodbye. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. So, that's the end of the show, then. Yeah, good night. <laughs> hey, you should have some more sunset. Say again. We want to see some more sunset. Hopefully, Jason's got this on his uh, Facebook. Look at that. Beautiful. Have you got that on Facebook Live, Jason? Yep, you can see that. That's no problem at all. Everyone's, everyone can see it. I'll just get pan around for it. Get that garden tidied up. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bloody great big garden. It's a big garden. All the way all the way down to the road there. Come in all the way down here. And all the way around. But yeah, it's hard work, but I love it. Yeah, great outdoors. Can't beat it. I'm up at five o'clock. Five o'clock sometimes early in the morning get out and do bits. Um, in the height of summer last year, God, tell you what, getting up at five o'clock in the morning, having to, you're having to get up at five o'clock in the morning, by 11 o'clock, the heat is it, it's that warm, you just can't, you can't, you can't work in it. So you have to get up early doors and finish about, about 11 or 12. Sounds um, good to me. <laughs> obviously, I mean, I have my main meal as, as, as Virtually the same time as a Portuguese meal, which is then about one to two o'clock in the afternoon, because then you know you, you have a little bit, a little bit of a siesta for a couple of hours to your food to and because it's too warm, and then by about what three, four o'clock you can get back out again until what seven, eight, nine, and, and do a bit more. So you know I'm keeping myself busy getting out there. Bit of a shot last year with the fires because when we, when we arrived, when we arrived it was it was it was like it is today when, when we arrived it, and then. Um, it took about three weeks for our furniture to come from out of storage from the UK. And as soon as it arrived, it was great for them because we have to be, where we are, we, we have to go a few times over there somewhere and uh, meet the guys from the removal company. As soon as the van got here, the heavens opened. And it was just like a, no <laughs> a normal Manchester downfall. And uh, that was back in May, about the second week in May. And after that day, we didn't have any rain at all up until about four weeks ago. So if you can imagine, we had two sets of fires in the time we've been, you know, time been here. 
Yeah, I remember that. The, the second one, we, we, we had to be, we, we were evacuated, and it was literally around the border of the land where we are. Um, the first one, the first one when we were here, it, it was still close because it actually started a lot closer to us. It sounds strange, but it was at the other side of the lake. And um, we did evacuate, but we came back after 48 hours because, you know, where we live in particular wasn't touched. And then, like I say, it shocked everybody else um, because obviously you see planes flying over. I don't know if anybody saw any videos. A few of my friends will have seen my videos last year of, um, of, of all the planes that were going over, you know, uh, the war planes, that is. Um, so, yeah, that was a bit of a shock to us first time around, but a lot of people did say, you know, you're in Portugal and, and it's one of the things that happened, you have to get used to them. And then, lo and behold, in October, it's the worst the worst fires in, in record, you know. Um, so, so, yeah, it's been, it's been, been a bit of a, bit of a steep learning curve. Let, let me just say that, you know, the off-grid living is, is, is great, it's fantastic. Um, but you really, really have to do your homework when you're setting up abroad. I mean, I know, I know a couple of you are thinking of doing that bit, a bit of listening in, and I know a couple of the guys uh, are also th- thinking of it as well. But really, really research in, into what you're doing. There, there are pitfalls, you know, there are things to look out for. But um, make sure you have a plan. Make sure you have a plan. Make sure you have a backup. That's, 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 the, thing that, that's the main thing that I would say. You know, make sure you have a backup plan. We've had a we've had a comment in the uh, in the Facebook live from uh, Penny Tommy um, and Penny Tommy hello Penny how are you doing uh, hope you're having a good Monday um, it's, uh, I'm I'm assuming it's she because it's Penny okay but if I'm wrong <laughs> if I'm wrong and I, I definitely could be uh, no without uh, it. Uh, I apologise <laughs> well I don't apologise I'm the, Penny's a girl's name um, I love Portugal. Uh, what part? What what part of Portugal is he living? Um, asks Penny. I'm I'm near. I'm in central Portugal. Um, I'm in a in a, um, a little village. There's only six houses in Arachela, where I am. Um, it's about eight kilometres to a place called Pedregal Pequena. And the nearest city, Serpa, is about ten twelve k away. So we're pretty we're pretty rural, but it's, it's absolutely amazing. Uh, to say we're rural, can get to the beach in just over an hour, uh, but we do have a lot of river beaches. How's that? Well, I hope that answers your question, Penny. Um, thanks for that. Uh, thanks for that, Owen. Um, get, get, tell us a bit about your background. Where, what, when you were in the UK, what was your background? What were you doing? Where were you living? What was your your meet? How did you make a living? That sort of thing. How did I make a living? I worked, gosh, where didn't I work? <laughs> I worked for, for my sins, I worked for the Department of Work and Pensions. Boo! <laughs> yeah, and that, but, but there is a good side, there is a good side that we'll come back to. Um, at my time, um, working for Cambridge, yeah, Royal Mail. Uh, uh, the one I love the most is, is me, spent a time cooking on boats, spent a bit of time doing some personal chefing. And uh, yeah, it is. Anything, I'm, I'm happy when I'm with a with me ingredients and I'm cooking, whether it's baking bread or, or anything else. Um, I grew up in Manchester. That's why I follow Manchester City. Paul. Mm. <laughs> um, uh, I lived. I lived in. I lived in. Uh, I was actually born in Huddersfield, but lived in Greater Manchester for a number of years. Spent 25 years in. Um, Halifax, big up to Halifax, massive. Uh, um, spent 25 years in Halifax, and then I met uh, my wife, um, and then moved back to Greater Manchester. And then, you know, after 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 getting wed and everything else, that's when we decided that we would we would leave the rat race and and, and come out here. Uh, what, how long ago was that, Owen? Now, when how long, you know, what was the time span from? meeting your wife to, you know, what year was it when you decided from, you know, obviously when you met your wife, you got married and then the decision to jump ship, so to speak? Well, I think we'd, we'd, all, we'd always spoke about it, really. When we, when we first met, we'd always talked about things that were wrong, you know, things that were going wrong in, in the country and everything else. Um, so what? 
say 2015, although we've both been looking individually, 2015 we seriously started looking for places. I mean, we'd, we'd, we'd gone through, I mean, we'd spoke to Paul. We spoke to Paul on a number of occasions in regards to um, the, the uh, utilities. And uh, you know we challenged them. We also we also did um, uh, a direct debit callback, just because just because of the way things are in the UK. I mean, I'm watching, I'm seeing it now. You know, I watch I watch loads of different news channels about the UK, and I can see it being you're being ripped apart. And I'm seeing I'm seeing it from here. You know, kids kids being deprived of, of, of free school meals. Um, Pensions, that's been going on for ages. Everything, everything, everything is just wrong about it. And all I want out of life is for me to be happy and healthy and, and, and be with good people and for good people to be with me. And, you know, just to be treated as I would treat anybody else, really. You know? I think the world would be a better place if everybody had that theos. Ethos, I should say. Do you know what I mean? It's, it, it, must, be about, it must be about six... You want it? Well, that's, that's a different general matter. I didn't, no, I didn't get any of that. That thermos, uh, then the, 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 the whole world would be able to have a cup of coffee. Oh, all I, day. Actually, I, I actually said, Theos, you bunch of pricks. <laughs> no, you did. <laughs> <laughs> Not thermos, you fucking idiots. Thermos. All the thermos. <laughs> Webster. <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry, Paul. I'm sorry uh, for. Yeah, no, please, let's get back to your urinary infection, eh? <laughs> <laughs> hey, no, but I've this. known you about six, about six or seven years now, Owen. Is yeah, it that long? Right. You know, it's about 2011, 2012, something like that, when uh, I met you at the Bolton group. I mean, uh, the Bolton Freedom Advocates, I think that's still going. I don't know about the meetings. It's been a long time. I've lost, lost touch with uh, Dave and Alan and that from the... But yeah. um, you know they were trying to make a difference six seven years ago. But it's it, it's as you must be seeing now as this country is being asset stripped and it's being torn apart. You must be able to see that it it's going to require people to actually grow up and take some responsibility for themselves. And I remember Dave Sanders and them trying to get people together to go and address the council meetings. And you just can't drum. You just can't drum up the interest because people believe that their life is okay, you know, because nothing's really affecting them. But the, when you explain how they're being ripped off, they somehow manage to justify it. Telling people yeah. that trying to pay debt with more debt creates more debt. Yeah, I know. But at least I've got a at least I've got a warm house this morning when I got up. I had that conversation this afternoon. Yeah, well, I had a warm house this morning. I'm going to continue having that warm house. I'm not going to uh, not pay my bills. I went, but that's your that's part of the problem. Trying to pay debt with more debt, it's it's madness. So, I doff my cap to to somebody like yourself to make a bold uh, jump, really, because I mean, you you didn't know how this was going to turn out, and at the end of the day, you not only fires on the outside you've had fires internally and everything to actually spark all this and you've been through some massive revelations yourself in in doing all this as well haven't you oh absolutely absolutely i mean going back to like you were saying about um the bolton theater advocate um when i when i moved back to manchester and and we did in fact we were told about the the freedom advocates um from my brother and his wife who was living in middleton and um you know my wife and i decided that 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 we would go to the meeting and that's how we got involved with it and in particular Dave Saunders and, and, and this is the thing just going back to that is that is that I, I he was going on about a community bill of rights and people should look at that yeah. community bill. and along along the same side as, as, as look at your parish councils and look how quickly they're disappearing and the reason they're disappearing is that the parish council have more right than your local government Yes, that's so correct. If, if people do want to make a difference, start yourself up a, a, a parish of your own. Get yourself your own community bill of rights. Before they, before they start changing your human rights in the UK, get together. I think it's it may be 20 people or more, but if you get together and compile this and you take it to your council with your demands, they have to acknowledge it. But it's, it's things like that, things, things that I learned. I mean, I, we spent a lot of time you know, going to meet things and, and, and everything else. And, and and it did actually get to the stage where that, that, that when we were in Bolton, 
is that we only ever went out and spoke to people that we could that we could talk to about the things that we we were passionate about. Yeah. Because if we kind of talked to anybody else about a, 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 a meeting or a function or anything else, we would get looked as if, you know tin foil hat wearers and, and, and things like that. And, and people that know me know I'm, I'm of sound mind. Yeah. You know, I, I'm I'm of sound mind is because I see. Exactly. exactly. But it's only those people who have eyes to see and ears to hear. These people are completely cut off. Uh, you know, the amount of times I've been told, that's bullshit. Well, have you read this? Have, have you ever read any of this? Well, no. Then how is this bullshit when you've never yeah. looked at it? It's a bit like me saying, oh, in your house is a shithole. Well, have you ever been? Well, no. Do you know what I mean? It'd be ridiculous for me to try and take a, an argumentative stance on that side of it, it's, I'm, I'm all for, please give me new information. If I'm not right about something, give me information that I can go and look at and then think about it for myself, not just use a soundbite from somebody else with a bit of cognitive dissonance involved. Well, well just, just, going back, just going back again uh, uh, about the uh, utilities. Uh, and as you know, I came to you to ask, ask advice about utilities and, and about how, how, how they steal the money off you twice and everything else like that. And, and that was the other thing that, that really, really got to me is that rather than than, than using the, the, the freeman of the land, and there's nothing wrong with that, I'm not going to disrespect anybody and, and, and what their beliefs are, but going into court and using court methods, you know, went in with court bundles to the court, explaining the situation to the court, and that was presented to the court before, as you're supposed to do. When it gets to the hearing, what happens? They ignore it all and just follow it. Because then you look into it and you find out that the utilities company are paid for the court in the daytime and they're already in stamping 200 warrants yeah. unless you go try and stand up for yourself although it never goes your way unless unless you smile you know they, they're going to screw you over no matter what do you know what owen it doesn't matter how smart you are because when you're knocking on the utilities door uh, me for instance it was uh, british gas that was a 2.3 billion pound profit the year pre when I was challenging them in court. So if I was able to prove and get a, get a, a win and the courts actually act how they're meant to act, they acted as a court, I would have won that because you cannot fuck about with bills of exchange. There, I've got it in. But you cannot fuck about with that. That's global commerce. Do you know what I mean? They can't fuck about with that. So they've got to either fuck you over, which they did anyway, Yes, Jason. <laughs> Jason man. Oh, do you know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? They, they, they're going to fuck you over anyway because they can't be seen. The, the, the executive, the corporations and the judiciary work together in the Crown's own courts. They can't lose in their own courts. It'd be, they, that's what, why it's there. The whole point to a county court hearing is so you're not heard. That's how ridiculous this shit is. And it takes people to do things... You know, I have. I, if I had a quid for how many people have, have posted or commented saying, "Show me the proof. Show me the proof how this works." Uh, how? How? How do you do that? How do you do? How do you show the proof? Go and fucking do it. Stop fucking yeah. calling people names and go and fucking do it. Grow some balls and go and do it. Yes, Ada. The thing is, unless you're an officer of the court, don't matter how right you are, um, because the police, the magistrate. Um, the so-called courts that do council tax, uh, everybody, they're all paid by the same big giant. Yeah. The, the, when, when you go to court to discuss money, trust me, it ain't going to be how much they're going to give you. Exactly. No. Exactly. But, um, I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you another shot of the, uh, the old sunset, and I'm going to go indoors. Okay, go I mean, that, that is absolutely gorgeous there, Owen. And for all you are looking on Facebook Live, whoa, I bet you wish you were there. I mean, um, we, we've got on to courts a little bit here in the in the legal system, but what I, I think would be really valuable if you could share with our listeners tonight is um, I know myself from the experience of um, when I was... Uh, 17 or 18 I went to live in Switzerland for a short while and then uh, just before I turned 40 I moved out to uh, Spain with my ex-wife now there are as as a an Englishman moving abroad 
there are many, many, many pitfalls, and I'm sure you must have come across quite a few of them. I wonder if you could talk us through some of, some of the stumbling blocks that you've come across, some of the obstacles that have been placed in your way, and how you've found to overcome them so that we could pa pass on that information to save other people going through the same problems. Well, I think, I think it's like with anything else. It's, it's all down to it. So you're researching. Um, one of the things that, that I remember is when you're purchasing a property over here, is to make sure that the, the, the property has what's called a habitation like. I have to get myself a chair because if, I'm, if, I, if I don't, I'm just going to be in darkness all the time, guys. Um, yeah, a habitation license. Um, if the property, because you, you'll find, I mean, you can find you can find properties over here with with acres of land for, um, let's say, twenty thousand euros. Seriously, twenty thousand euros with a couple of hectares, and there will be a building on there. So you go along, you buy it for 20 grand, you think you've got three or four acres, and you build your property, everything else. The local council will come along and say, when was this house built? And they say, now. And uh, they'll say, where's your habitation license? You don't have it. It's a property, you can't live in it. Simple. The building, the building itself, if, you go, if you're going to buy uh, a farmland, yeah, make sure that there is a, far, a, a farm dwelling, a farmhouse. Because if not, there's no habitation license. I think it's 1958. Before 1958, uh, properties, it, they will have a habitation license. Now, the, well, we, this house here had the footings and what was done, it was built around all the extra bits, the columns and everything else out there, where they were extra bits put on. Um, what else can I tell you about it? Well, the, 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 thing, the thing is as well is that one of the one of the main things that I would say is that um, make sure that if you are going to buy a property, that the woodland around you is clear. With the fires that we had last year, the two fires, there is a um, there is a measurement, and I think it's ten meters away from the property. So any any sort of tall trees and things like that have to be um, ten meters away from the property. Um, I can't really show you from, from mine. It, it, it really isn't. That's not, that doesn't really bother me, all, the, all that's around there. Um, there's a, a route... There's, a, there's a quite a big debate at, at the moment about it, really, because if you think about it, if everybody, if everybody at the moment is just stopping their trees down because it's 10, 10 metres close to a property, but the wood is still left there, that's still another fire risk. And the only reason I say that is because the eucalyptus, got this, it, it, they're highly flammable. Do you know what I mean? It's like, it's like having uh, you know, matchsticks going all around. So that, that's the other one. What's the other thing I can... Um, yes, when you do buy a property, particularly in Portugal, there are... Um, you'll find that there are a number of estate agents for the one property. I, I, I heard of a sale of a couple just last week that they bought a property... Um, they brought a property two years ago. They were coming over, doing little bits of work on the house, and then obviously they, they went back to the UK. And on the visit, I think it was about three or four weeks ago, they came back and they couldn't get in. And when they contacted the estate agent, the estate agent told them that, oh, yes, it, it was sold to another couple. They paid up and everything else, and they're in. So you okay, now. Like I was saying about research, make sure. I mean, we, we, were, we were quite fortunate with the estate agent that we had because we've been talking to him for over seven or eight months. Right. About a different property. <clears throat> and he, he, you know, he, he, he helps us, you know, find this property. But that, that's another one. I'm just trying to think of what's off the top of my head. How long um, did the process take, Owen, from, from right? initiating to moving? Well, that was quite good, really, because that, that, it was, a, it was a, a, a quick one for us. <laughs> I'm just seeing, I'm just seeing just the message there, thanks for that. Um, that's completely just put me on guilt in hell. You can't get those out. The ones that come up on the Skype chat, you can't read them out. Yeah. Well, while you're, while you're having a think, Owen, um, something that occurred to me, and I wonder if you had a similar experience, 
Um, when we were getting legal advice, when we first moved to Spain, um, there was a very strange situation uh, arose in that we were getting a lot of uh, British expats that were supposedly trying to help us with our legal situation. And we found out before very long that the British expats who were helping us were the ones that were actually screwing us over. The, the local Spanish provided you, made some sort of effort to meet them halfway to learn a little bit of Spanish so you could have a... a a, a basic conversation, if you, even if you needed a translator or to speak in English, if you made the effort, they they were most welcoming. But the the Brits that were out there trying to rip us off was was really quite astonishing. Did you have a similar experience? Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <it's laughs> <laughs> well, I'm laughing at it because it is, and I'm going to swear it's funny as fuck. Um. um we have no intention to mix with the expat community here, and that is no detriment to anybody that's here. We left the UK for a reason, to be off-grid and self-sufficient and, and live on his own and just get on with life, yeah? Mm -hmm. um, we stayed with a, 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 <laughs> um, a, a few k's away. They have, they have a apartment to let, so we stayed with them um, for a while, and then we got taken to um, a bar where a lot of the... Um, expats go mm -hmm. and um we were sat there and i i'd ordered i'd ordered uh well looking for something that i could drink that i knew i could that my stomach could take and i, I thankfully got a, a bottle of guinness so that was mm -hmm. that was offered to me on the bar with a glass and a bottle and all of a sudden this female hand picks up the picks up the bottle opens it up and pours it and puts it back on the table so i'm looking around thinking who's this who's just done all this i was then later told that this lady was the matriarch the matriarch. I don't, I don't know. Like, what do you mean? The matriarch? Apparently, this is the person that sorts everybody out. And da, 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 da. so, as far as I, as far as I'm concerned, that's somebody that just gets into your business and wants to know about your business. So we, she, to, she was the queen of the expats, was she? Well, we call her the matriarch. I don't know whether if it was a queen or, or whatever else. But that put put us off. You know, joining a community if we were to join a community, but we never had an intention to join a community. Do you understand what I mean? Yeah. Um, going back to before about the, about the length of time uh, uh, it took us, we, we, when we sold the house in, and I speak, uh, uh, we as, as a past tense, um, when we bought, when we sold the house in Bolton, we got a one way ticket to Portugal and we said we were going to buy, we were, we yeah. were going to buy. Um, yeah. And we, 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 I can't remember the day we arrived, but we looked up properties on the Monday and Tuesday. The Wednesday, um, we went to see our fantastic estate agent and he took us to see a property, which I didn't like because I was looking out of somebody else's garden and I wanted to look out on my own. And then he said, what, what were you looking for? And we said, well, just something that we can be offering self-sufficient. And he said, I think I have the perfect place for you and brought us here. Uh, we had a look. We actually saw the house a year prior, and it was up at 180 or 160,000 euros. And, we, and we, we said it was beautiful, but we just couldn't afford it at the time. Yeah. And, um, uh, we asked him the price it was at the time, and it was 120. Now the thing is, is that a lot of people were coming to have a look at the house, and a lot of people were 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 doing the full offer because they were because it has a composting toilet, it doesn't have a flushing toilet. We have a urinal downstairs, which is good for me. And um, <laughs> we have the, the, the fruit shoot upstairs. Um, but that all goes to the garden anyway, and I'll talk about I'll, I'll talk about uh, oh, that later. Well, you, need is a, is a McDonald's cup, isn't it, Jason? Literally. Sorry, all you need is a McDonald's cup, you don't need a urinal. You don't need a urinal. <laughs> <laughs> but with, yeah. with, we saw it on the Wednesday, we put an offer in, hang on, no, we put an offer, saw it on the Wednesday, put an offer in on the Thursday, it got accepted on the Monday, it completed on the Wednesday, we're moving on the Friday. And that, and that was purely because, of, that was the other thing as well, that was one of the biggest things here in Portugal, if you are going to buy a property, make sure you find out who the owners are. We were fortunate because the owners of this property, um, they weren't Portuguese. 
A lot of the properties over here in Portugal go through the family. Nobody's been living in the property for ages and ages, and some some say it decides to put this house up for sale, and you go along and buy it, and then all of a sudden the family turns up and knocks on the door. They have the legal right to throw you out because it, it, it gets passed down, it gets passed down into the family. So that's one of the big things to look out for as well when you're buying over here, as well as make sure that all the paperwork's in order, make sure that that you know everything's been everything's been done correctly, in particular if it's come from um, a Portuguese family. It's like uh, it's it's the same like that over there where you, they're passing the, the 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 properties down through the family. That is exactly what they're challenging over here. They're trying to pass legislation to make that not possible for your children to inherit your property. Yeah, so what, so, so what, that they can steal it away from you. Yeah, exactly, exactly. It, it seems like it, doesn't it? You know, do you know what I mean? Because. It, it, it's like everything else that they're, they're taking away the family. They're already taking away the family unit. They've yeah, away the they, family. They, they pretty much destroyed everything, Owen. In the last, I mean, they've been. It's been a lot more intense, I'd say, in the last 25, 30 years. But they've been destroying this slowly but surely for decades, and they've got themselves into a position now where, as long as the mass majority of people either don't give a fuck or don't or aren't interested because it's not affecting them right now. I mean, the, the thing that springs to me over here is, uh, I don't know if any of you guys remember the Mar the famous Martin Niemöller quote when he was in Germany. He came out of Germany after the war, out of the concentration camps, and he became a pastor. And he was interviewed at a, some demonstration in the States, I think it was. And they asked him, said, well, why are you here? The, you know, it doesn't seem to have anything to do with you, this this type of demonstration. I can't remember where it, where it was about now. But he said he, he said a famous thing that I've never forgot. He said, well, he said where he lived, he says they came for the union workers first. And I wasn't in a union, so... Uh, sorry, they came for the immigrants first. And I wasn't an immigrant, so I said nothing. Then they came for the unions. And I wasn't in a union, so I said nothing. Then they came for the Jews. I wasn't Jewish, so I said nothing. By the time they came for me, there was no fucker left to say anything for him. And he said, that is why I will say when it's wrong, it is fucking wrong. And basically, there's three grumpy bastards here who knows what is wrong with this place, who knows how people can start to fix it. I mean, Aidy's said the other night that he's a big anarchist where we don't need government. And I I agree with him. If we can all be self-sufficient like that, I can. I don't need rules and regulations to tell me not to punch somebody in the face, not to kill somebody, not to steal. I don't need that. But regulations no. is... Go on, sorry. No harm or injury. Exactly. So I know that. Aid knows that. We all know it. But the situation that we're in, you're, you're trying to ask somebody to come from complete darkness to complete light and understand everything. And there's so much in between. And I think there's a lot of stepping stones that we can use. I mean, I'm a big believer that you can take control of yourself and your own assets and participate in this system to make it work for you to the point where none of us have to work again. But, you know, your class is a utopianist. You know, that's utopianism. Well, we tried every other fuckingism and it well, never I worked. I'm, I'm out here doing that. I don't get any money from the state. You know, I don't get anything, although I'm entitled to uh, help from the UK. I don't have that. I don't actually have anybody coming in at all. I'm surviving on what I have here um, and, and, the, and the little bit of, of, of savings I did have. You know, it, it, yeah. it's, one of, it's one of the things I... It, it, was, it was a choice and, and I, you know, I still... I still remain. I still remain here to live my life in that way because it's like it was saying. It was mentioned last night. I can't go back. Mm. I've, I've, I've taken the right pill. I'm not going back. Yeah. You, you this know, this is, sorry, I just want to. We've got a question. I just want before it scrolls away. Um, I think it's important. It's from uh, one of our listeners uh, watching on Facebook Live. Uh, Mandy Gold. How you doing, Mandy? I uh, hope you, um, you, you're 
you didn't hear the story about my poorly piss earlier on, but uh, I've come in a little bit later on. But uh, anyway, <laughs> Mandy's got this question, and I think it's something that she's thinking about. In fact, she states it's something that she's thinking of doing herself. Um, he said, she, sorry, she says, uh, did you sell your furniture or take with or put in storage and sent over later when getting a permanent place? I am yeah. doing this this year and need uh, uh, tips... And need tips, thanks, guys. She spoke. So that, that, that's Mandy. She's going to be doing the. She, she seems determined enough that she's going to be doing this uh, this well, year. So uh, any tips? So what did you do? Well, what I'll do um, if she personal messages me via Facebook, I'll just give her the heads up on the companies to avoid, in particular if she's in the north, because we have an experience with the moving company. I'm not going to go into it because it had it, it been mentioning company names and I don't want to do that. We can connect you two together <laughs> and, then, and, and you can uh, exchange uh, you, your experiences with her and, and uh, uh, hopefully uh, give us some advice. Now, and you were just about to say something, Andy, weren't you? Um, if I was, I've completely forgotten it. Sorry. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, listen... I'll on a, on a bit of a more light-hearted note, um, inevitably, with you being in Portugal, we've had um, we've had the uh, questions about Madeleine McCann. Now, somebody's uh, asked the question: what is, the, what is their attitude towards Madeleine McCann? What do they think? Uh, Paul, can you before we go, Paul? Can when you before you rearrange your furniture, can you mute your mic because it's cutting everybody else off when you, there's all them scraping and bumping noises. Your end. <laughs> Yeah, no worries. <laughs> did you get that? Um, I'll. Yeah, I, I did. We're, I'm in the village of six. Um, there is a TV over there in the background, but that is literally to plug my computer in. Um, don't get into the news. Don't really talk to people about it. It's something that that more Algarve. So it sounds a bit daft, but it's, we're up in the sticks. Literally, yeah. I have the sticks here. So things that we you know what I mean? Yeah. Really come into people's conversation. Um, I, I think it's difficult. Well, if you're talking about a part of people from the Portuguese speaking about it, you're talking about a, a language thing. You now, I could say, um, somebody will correct me if I'm wrong. Um, what is it? I don't know. I'm not even going to attempt the Portuguese word. So if you can imagine somebody trying to give you a conversation, or I'll have a conversation about the McCann's. Your levels of at my levels to Portuguese and vice versa with a person who's English have to be bob on. Yeah. You know what I mean? So things, things like that, no, don't really come cool. up. I've got me, I'm showing the telescope there because I've just moved that from uh, upstairs. Uh, that's another reason why I love it here. The night sky is just bang, just there. If somebody just, you know, drops it on the, on, on the top of you. And before it gets dark, I'll give you a quick tour of the garden before we get off because uh, I just got to show it off. <laughs> Make sure that. Smithersfield, they won't be using it to look at the stars. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got loads of, loads and loads of fruit trees. I mean, they're, 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 they've just they've fruited. I've had them all, but they're flowering again. That's one of the oranges. Got another orange here. Got that lemon at the back, which one's sorting out. Got another one down here that's uh, called Buddha's Fingers Lemon. And there's a little tiny fruit there, but that's, that's a knackered one that has to come off. But that's, little, that's just I'll put it in the camera and it's just down there somewhere. So we've got loads of lemons. It's going to come through here. We've got about 23, 24 olives. Getting stuck here through, through there. Loads of, loads of yucca trees and everything else. I don't know if the camera's full. I don't know if you can still see me there, guys. Yeah, we can see you, Owen. Yeah, we've got you. It's full of rosemary hedge down here. This, this one here is a uh, blood orange. That's just finished. Another lemon, I've been having my lemon tea. I have a lemon tea, well, not a lemon tea, I have lemon and honey every morning. That's, that's, uh, that, that's a coincidence because uh, uh, with what's happened today, my arsehole's like a blood orange. <laughs> 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 oh, have, Owen, have you got any little herb plants you can show us? Any what? Little herb plants. Herb plants? Yeah, yeah, I've got some herb plants. Just bear with me for a second, I'll... Uh, I think he's talking about a specific type of herb here, aren't you, Ed? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it's me 
same time. You know what I mean? Okay. I have. I don't know if you can read this down there. Oh, babies! Cut a couple little babies there. Wow. And I'm not going to. I'm not going to show. I'm not going to show you the rest. <laughs> Kumquat. I've got Kumquat marmalade coming out of my bloody ears. And I've just done today, this is how ingenious, I'm, I'm a very make do and mend person. So we've, we've had some fencing lying around and loads of polythene. So I've made some little polytunnels. Oh, cool. Oh, awesome. Well, now you've mentioned um, Kumquat marmalade coming out your ears, I'm sure Jason will have that by this time next week. <laughs> Coming out of his arse, probably. Yeah. Um, we've got a few, got a few great bands, raisin and grapes as well. Down here, in this little triangle behind me, that's where my potatoes have been put in. Beautiful. Uh, this middle patch is looking rather dry. It isn't, believe me. It's just the soil. We've got some carrots going on there. A bit of digging up to do in there, and also some red cabbage going on. Awesome. This experimental no dig. Which is a no digging at all, you just stick things in. Mm -hmm. I've got some spuds and some strawberries that hopefully are going to come up in there. Put it further down. Put a little garlic patch down there. In here, I've got my onions, cabbages, beetroot. And then I've got some beans going in that patch there. So I've got other bits to do as well. I've got other lemons, other things back there. The woodland, I've got to show you the woodland. Because we have uh, wild boar. <laughs> I've had to put this metal, this fence up at the back here. Because we have wild boar that come through, come through the woods at the back here. And if you can imagine, there is nobody for 20 kilometres that way. Beautiful. Kilometres that way. Uh, this is my, my, latest, my latest little contraption down here. This is my uh, compost bin for the for the poop shoot. So that comes from the from the composting toilet. Well, you'd be interested in that, Jason. You'd fill that. No. <laughs> that no, shit, that shit no. don't there. <laughs> see, he's trying to strike back. You see, he's trying to strike back. <laughs> that is just completely poo. So that, that'll be that'll be just uh, used down there to compost down there. That'll be used on the garden. I'm just going to just go and nip through and just quickly take into the orchard before I go back indoors. So you really... if, you, if you're using that compost to, to grow your herbs, mate, that'll be some good shit. I am. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, um, Crappy Leeds is asking in the chat room, have you got any kale, Owen? He said it, it, it sounds fascinating, but it doesn't work so well on the radio, this <laughs> tour of the garden. <laughs> <laughs> so the cherry trees just Some people bottom. just don't have any imagination, do they? Well, that was so. Yeah, everything, everything, all the fruit trees are coming to blossom down here now, which is really nice. Got pomegranates as well. Oh, a lot of, lot of stuff really, 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 really healthy. I'm just going to come to the end because we had a bit of a revelation. We didn't realise when we uh, bought the property that we had a bit more land, so. Like I say, this is the orchard part here, and from here onwards, I'm just going to walk with it and trot on, and if I fall over, it's because this land is uneven. But we found, <laughs> nearly went, we found that this land here, also, is ours. Wow. Oh, cool. So, if anybody wants to invest and buy a yurt, only about two or three grand, come and place it over here. And uh, have it as a summer, summer, summer getaway for yourself. You can help me on the farm. You, <laughs> you are proper tempting me now. <laughs> <laughs> a year, you, can get, you can get a full, fully, fully, fully uh, complete year for about 12 grand. And that's all fully functional with heating and water and everything else. Wow. We've got, like, around the garden as well. I mean, I, at first, I do have a lawnmower, but I don't have it all to cut. And I've got water pipes all the way around the garden. I have an irrigation system for all the big plants in here when they do come out. It's got the black pipes, got, everything gets watered. And this is all from my own water well, which is somewhere down here. This is my view. I've been cutting this today because it has to be cut. 
Yeah, but Owen, but, did, Owen, you're full of shit because nobody lives like you, mate. Nobody lives like that. <laughs> nobody does. Nobody does. <laughs> nobody, nobody lives like me. But, yeah, um, it, it makes me laugh that dickheads can come on uh, and say, the bots are a load of bullshit. You're, fucking, you're walking in your own fucking garden, in your own orchard that you've bought and gone and constructed yourself. Do you know what I mean? And, and you've decided to come off grid because you, you're not um, stuck within that system that is stripping you of everything. Now, fair enough, people could still have an argument, well, moving into the EU... You are losing some rights, as you know, because you are under all civil law over the Owen. Can I just say something there? Yeah, go that, on. You know, you said you're talking about people losing rights. Yeah. I've come here, and yeah. especially in the, in, in the isolation as well, is that if I live the life of no harm, injury, or loss to anybody, yeah. I have nothing to worry about. You know, exactly. and, and I mentioned it once again. I'll just say this for anybody listening in. Council tax a year, 50 euros. Wow. What, what, what do you get for that? What, do, what, 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 you know, what, what's your benefits from that? Um, is that the, all the hedges get trimmed, which is a fire risk if you think about it. They get sorted out. I get a uh, refuge collection. Oh, I think that's about it. You right. of... but, but you're actually getting a service for that, whereas yeah. we don't over here. We, 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 our council tax don't pay for fucking all. And exactly. anything to do with that. Exactly that. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. So, so literally, for me, for me to live here in this house, I, I, I would give you a, I, I would give you a tour of upstairs. In fact, I will give you a tour of upstairs in a minute if you'd like. Um, for me to live here successfully. Um, paying the bills I have to pay would my expenditure would be around about three grand for me to live here. A year. A year. Wow, superb! But listen, you're going to give us a tour of the house now. I, I think we we probably need to uh, have a whilst you're doing the tour of the house. I think we probably need to have some uh, discussion as well along the lines, and not just a uh, here's me wardrobe and <laughs> you know this is this is me B day and this is this is me blog. I'm just going to go back to the question uh, of earlier on that was asked about the furniture. It was stranger because all the furniture, all the, when we got here. Uh, there was already, we paid an extra two grand over the price of the house and there was furniture left for us. Mm -hmm. So, bookcases that are there behind me uh -huh. and, that, and that one went over there. That was left, that was left for us and this is just, what I've actually done now because, well, I'll go back into the light so you can see this. Um, what I've actually, what I've actually done is actually made downstairs into like a self-contained apartment because I'm hopefully wanting to do a B&B. Or let people come and stay and, and, and just chill out <laughs> here off. Um, so yeah, I've, moved, I've I've literally moved down here. So I've made the bed into a day bed. So this is like you know in an office space over in that corner. This is the kitchen down here. This was this was this was as it was literally. Apart from the furniture that we brought with us, it was this. Everything once again was left. Well, I tell you what we should do. We should uh, probably save the rest of this for the second hour because we've we're coming up to an hour, uh, Owen. I don't want to get you, you know, while you're in your full uh, Gok Wan mode. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to going, put you down in your prime, as it were. But um, again, as I was saying before, it's not really very good. Uh, I, I know you've, I know you've, you're explaining to us all, all, all these good things about it. But for our radio listeners that don't aren't watching on Facebook Live, it's you know, they're, they're, all that sort of scene is is nothing. They're just listening. So, uh, the, listening. We're at the hour mark, and we're, we're, we always have uh, a bit of a rest so that we can go. For, probably me for about four wees. Uh, everyone else perhaps have one wee, get themselves a drink, or or uh, or do uh, well whatever you do in the time that you've got free. Just remember, guys, we're going to still be live on Facebook Live. So during the break. Uh, so I remember not to say anything during the break that we don't that we wouldn't want broadcast. Okay, and it's just a, a brief warning because uh, sometimes we've found ourselves doing it. We've started talking about something that we really shouldn't have been, and uh, and then I've realised that people on Facebook Live can still hear us because we mute 
the music that we play due to copyright reasons. So, uh, listen, that's the first hour. There's some great action going on in the uh, in the chat room. Where we've got Crappy Leeds again. He's uh, proposing marriage, uh, this time to uh, a third person, uh, Kaz, who I think is, is uh, rebutting his, his advances. And, uh, <laughs> and she's, she's, she's uh, claiming she's all, all, already spoken for, but perhaps she's seen him and just says, uh, oh, I've already got a boyfriend, you know. <laughs> so, uh, Kaz, uh, you, keep, you keep on rebelling him because uh, he's not had any luck at all. So, uh, right, we're going to have a couple of records. We'll be back for the second hour with myself, Paul Webster, Andy Young, Aid Hardy, and, of course, Owen. Whose uh, surname is... Hello, this is Heath Dweft, and I listen to...
And welcome back to Raconteurs News. Uh, this Monday evening, it's the 26th of March 2018. 2018, 2000, I keep fucking doing it wrong, saying 2018, 2018 instead of 2018. But uh, yes, I sound like a, an old fart. Uh, but we, we had a very, very interesting first hour. It's, uh, we've got the whole gang together. Uh, we've got Paul Webster, Paul Bills of Exchange, Webster, how are you doing, Paul? I'm so, mate. Good stuff. We've also got Aid Captain Cliche Hardy. How are you doing, Aid? Yeah, old pigs, fully fed and ready to fly. And we've got Andy, not so young as well. Uh, the, it, the the old gang is back together. It's like raconteurs, like rising the phoenix from the flames. And we're, we're, we're all back. We've all had as issues and we've all had times where we've not been wanting to do it. But now we're raring to go. And uh, and uh, we've got a, a very good guest tonight. Um, Owen, how are you doing, Owen? I'm not too bad. I'm not too bad. I'm just panicking. I'm just trying to find a, uh, some word to rest this way. Um, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to roll myself a cigarette. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> probably, probably a little bit too much information. Uh, anyway, uh, we've we had a very interesting discussion in the first hour. I'm sure the second hour is just going to be the same. We've got we've covered everything from Madeleine McCann to uh, bills of exchange, uh, which inevitably came up. And uh, I I can tell you that the uh, the winning time was 28 minutes. 28 <laughs> minutes. Per, so if you had 28 minutes or you were pretty close to 28 minutes, if nobody did. Uh, then, uh, well, uh, <laughs> well, 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 you've won yourself a prize. Right, at the start of this second hour, Aidy, you were uh, you were mentioning in the break that we uh, that you had a few comments and some questions to ask as well, and we didn't really hear much from you in the first hour. So uh, why don't we? Uh, why don't you kick us off tonight uh, in this second hour? Yeah, I mean, I, I want to talk about Thailand because that's where I'm going back to shortly, um, which seems a lot different to what uh, Owen's experienced. But what I wanted to ask Owen was about the solar panels. Um, yeah. I, I don't have solar panels on my house here in uh, Sheffield, but a lot of my neighbours do. Now, as I understand it over here, you can't be off-grid with solar panels. If you've got solar panels... They have to feed into the grid. You get paid a pittance for the electricity that you generate, and then you've got to buy it back off them at full price. If anybody can, if anybody can tell me that I'm wrong, then I'm more than happy to li listen because I may well be wrong. But that that is my understanding. How does it work in Portugal? Do it, you basically generate your electricity. It's stored in batteries, and it's yours to keep. Sorry, I'm laughing. I'm laughing right off because I'm doing something else. I would never do live on air. Um, but anyway, um, yeah, with the we don't have the, the, there is an electric company over here. However, um, I'm not with them at the moment, purely because of the fact of, of of the sunlight is here. I get enough sunlight to generate to, to top up my batteries that will last three days. Um, I do suffer in the not so sunny days um, but that just limits my electricity down so i'm very careful with what i have on um, i don't have a telly as i say that only goes on when i have the computer on to use as a monitor uh, so the other things that's actually running is the fridge and the freezer um, that's about it really uh, the solar panel does, does everything i need i mean obviously <coughs> I, can run, I can run everything else off it but you know i keep everything to a minimum but basically, what you generate is yours to keep. Yes. Right. Yes. Okay. So I, I mean, I'm I'm sort of looking at three other guys on the screen, and is what I described here in the UK is, is that how it works? Where, you know, you've got to give it to them for a pittance, but you've got to buy it back at full price. Uh, well, it seems to be. Uh, I haven't had much dealings, to be fair, with uh, solar panels, but it seems to be that. It is hooked up to your meters and it's meant to subsidize. It's meant to make your electricity that they're going to charge you for anyway cheaper. That's all it does see, or it seems to do over here. The factor is, it shouldn't you be able to actually just not pay for anything if you're well, going, if, you know, forgetting about the, the, the bills and everything, that shouldn't you just be able to be self sufficient? But it's not what the government really wants. I mean, you've got people 
who were being fined, like in the States, the digging ponds to, like Owen, to collect his own water. And um, just that's not even just for irrigation. They're actually treating the water and, and using the water for themselves. But the government are claiming once the rain comes down, it's the government's. Uh, I believe that uh, um, Danny Bampin's been posting that he's just been uh, had a, a decent win with uh, a water company who's claiming that they own the water. And he's, he's, he's had a, he, he, say again, Owen. He's been fighting that for a while, hasn't he? Yeah, okay. yeah. Well, it, it looks like he's had a payout today. So it looks like somebody has took something on and got something. And that's that's what people need to start doing. You know, yeah. Dan, Danny's been in the game a long time as much as anybody. You know, it's it's a but this is a long it, it's the long game. You've they these people now want to drag people into the long grass, and as long as you stand your ground and stay in the truth, they don't want to touch you because if they get you into these places, they've got to fuck you over. There's no two ways about it. They can't play the game because the this stuff is too unbeatable, and it's people who are now clogging the courts up. If everybody turned up to a, anybody who's in trouble with council tax or anything like that, through no fault of their own, if they turn up to these hearings and start to challenge, just ask questions, you're going to clog this system up. It's going to fuck them up. And it's it's about being um, intellectual, not losing your temper, not, not getting angry about this. Even though if you learn how to do that, please share those tidbits with me because... This stuff does make you angry. You, you know, the police are being used uh, for completely the wrong type of situations over here. And it, the Americans, I always use the analogy, if the America sneezes eight to ten years, we're going to catch a cold. And they're sneezing like, fuck, and we're catching colds left, right and centre at the minute. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think... Um, uh, from what you said earlier on, Owen, um, I think that you, you, what your main uh, advice would be would be to have a plan. Now, um, what sort of AD, aid's going to be moving abroad uh, quite well as soon as you can afford it? Um, so, aid. First of all, do you tell it what sort of plans have you got in place, and then we'll get Owen's. Um, We'll get Owen's opinion on, on what you've done so far and how how it's uh, it's going to uh, going to affect you and help you. Can Sorry, I, can I just, yeah, sure. Just, before we do, just going back to the thought, I've, I've, I've changed location. I've just got into our uh, end. I call it the engine room. See all the bank of batteries down there. Oh, cool. You're right. Wow. And then we've got the bank on the wall there. I can, I can go online and check everything with that. This is the water heater. And then we have a triple water filtration system there, UV um, and two others. <laughs> so the water gets filtered three times as well. Beautiful. Which um, is just me. I just thought I'd say that going, going back to that. Yeah, go ahead, um, Adi. Yeah, um, basically in Thailand, if you, if you are an expat, you can't own anything. Yeah, so, I, yeah I, I know about that, yeah. So you, you can't import furniture. I mean, basically, you arrive there, you want a bag, a suitcase, that's it. Um, I'm told that if you get yourself a wife and she's Thai, um, that you can then own property. Um, no, no. It belongs to the wife. It belongs to the wife. It belongs to the wife. <laughs> yep. I've had two, two, I've had two friends um, that, that will tell you that. Um, Paul knows one of them. Um, but yeah, as far as that, as far as I'm aware, you, you can't own anything. You can't own anything over there. It will belong to the wife because then she can pass it through to her family. I believe. Mm. That's so now, well, basically, what I intend to do is um, uh, two years and forty-eight weeks. Not that I'm counting. <laughs> um, I, <laughs> I, I, I can get my hands on my pension, and there's not enough in it to live over here. Um, but I reckon there is enough in it to live uh, over in Thailand. Um, now, over there, um, because you can't own anything, there's a big difference in living somewhere and being on holiday somewhere. Because, of course, when you go on holiday, you just do whatever you want to do. You're only there for two or three weeks, so, you know, you really, really let your hair down. And there's a massive difference in cost. 
And if you're not careful, you can end up where for the first six months of your living there, you know, you can blow a year's money, um, which I won't be in a position to do. So what I intend to do when I go out there this time, I'm spending five days in the city centre in the middle of party town, five days about three mile out of town, staying somewhere where I think I could probably end up living, and then five or six days back in the town again to finish off uh, my three week stay. Um, cost wise over there, uh, an apartment which is basically bigger than my bungalow that I live in at the minute, uh, well I say my bungalow, my rented bungalow, um, with the swimming pool outside, um, pitch and put out the back, fishing lake, is 150 quid a month to wow. rent. Wow. And, and even if you spent another 50 wow. quid a month paying for water and electricity, because you don't need gas, but electricity, um, you know, 200 quid a month, 50 quid a week, you know, makes my uh, 600 quid rent look ridiculous. That's before any bills that I've got where I live right now. Wow. Um, so, you know, that that's my sort of plan of action at the minute, because cause you can't own anything out there anyway. Um, you know, it's, it's just a case of, I don't know, just, I'm just going to go out there and suck it and see. Yeah, I don't think you should be going to Thailand saying things like that, you know, lady. Do you know, I said that and I knew you. I knew, I knew Webby had pulled that. I knew it. Uh, God, so you think you're fucking I've paid for it. Like it. Well, as well, I've paid for it already. <laughs> don't forget to have a ride on Wiggies before you go over there. <laughs> oh. Super. I've just come outside to listen to Mr. Carter. I don't know if you can hear him in the background. Hang on, we've got a uh, a thing on from uh, Crappy Leeds in the chat room. He says, "Will I marry him?" Uh, listen, if you're about five foot two uh, and tie, maybe. Uh, but if you're male, no. <laughs> Sorry to be blunt, but fuck off. <laughs> Are you being discriminatory? <laughs> Am I? Well, it, might be, it might be non-binary, you know. Crappy leads might be non-binary, and you you could upset somebody. You don't want to take up Jason's mantle. He's the one who upsets people. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, race, creed, colour, or genitalia, as far as being prejudiced, don't interest me. But when it comes to jumping in the sack, genitalia is fairly important, and I'd prefer it. Well, in fact, I insist on it being the opposite to what. <laughs> I'm, saying. I'm glad you insisted. <laughs> Yeah. What, the, the being non-binary, does that mean that they, 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 they can't use ones and zeros? <laughs> <laughs> What's your phone number? It's so oh, sorry, I can't use that. So now you're being it's offensive it's again here, Jason. You just can't number. help yourself. And I'm a, I'm non-binary. Okay, so no, no. You'll have to give me another number that doesn't have a zero or a one in it. This is how fucking ridiculous it is, isn't it? No oh, zero. Yeah. Well, no, trans, it, haven't you got the translucids, the ones who some, it might get up in the morning and feel like they're a man, but by the afternoon they may feel differently? You know, there's a lot of different options with these things now. It, it, it does get quite confusing for me, I must admit. You, you see, the, 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 that's the power of the anal stimulation of a good afternoon shit. <laughs> you wake up in the morning and you think, fucking hell. I'm, uh, today I'm going to be a fucking lesbian woman, and then you have a good shit, and you got that fucking that it's just come out of your arse, and it's really big, thick. You know, one one of them that feels like it's coming out sideways, and you have a big shit, and you think, fucking hell, well, how ace would it be to get be a gay male and have that all the time? So that's what you do. You just <laughs> stop. It's fucking ridiculous. Oh, <laughs> Come on, Ian, stop that one, mate. Jason, does that past 30 seconds mean that we've just been cut off Facebook? No, I think we're still on. Oh, right, OK. I think we're still on. It's it, it's uh, it's going live on my thing. But, but that that's just it, what, where it is, isn't it? it? We've got to this point where... where I mean, come on. You, you, there's some things you just can't choose. And you can't choose your fucking family, right? Next, it'll be, oh, I'm going to choose my family. 
I'm non-family. Right? <laughs> oh, I like that family better than mine. I'm part of their family now. That's what I'm going to fucking do. It's just, you know, there's some things in life that you just can't choose. One of them is the fucking, your family. Another one is your gender, the, the, the way that you were born. Right? You might have... Uh, it, You've got to be able to deal with it. That's what being fucking grown up is. You grow up and you might think, oh, I'm a bit picked on. And then you, you get to a, a... I know I did it myself. I thought I was the most picked on kid when I was fucking growing up. And I weren't. I weren't the most picked on kid. I weren't, I weren't the best track kid, but I weren't the most picked on kid. But that's how I fucking felt about it. But these days, it's not only that, that these kids are feeling like this and trying... Because I, I try to hide it. Try to you know I tried to hide what I, the, that that's the way I felt uh, because well I, I just got pissed took at me whenever I fucking did try and say anything but you know I I I, I tried to hide it but these days it's like a badge of honour to to be able to say oh no I, I'm being I, I'm being so picked on by this on that and I'm such a victim and it's it, what what where where did we what what do we do it's Molly Coddling. These it's fucking millennials, though. These millennials, though, Paul. We're, Safe we're, place. We're getting old, northern, yeah. opinionated, uh, um, uh, and, and, and and let's face it, we're right, aren't we? That's what we are. So yeah, there's, there's a couple of uh, ironic things that is seemingly going on in the past couple of weeks. You've got that Parkland shooting. You've got kids being killed again from guns. And the first thing that they have the kids coming out of class to march on is a school that isn't armed to stop a school shooter to go out and ban guns. So let's let's make sure there are no guns to stop another school shooter. That's one ironic thing. But then you've got, I don't know if you lads have heard of Planned Parenthood in America. Is that it? Planned Parenthood yeah. is where people go to plan being parents. If you want an abortion, I believe... Up, yeah, I believe that it's up to 26 weeks now... And you can have an abortion. That's a baby. That wh whichever way you want to look at it. But Planned Parenthood then promotes these marches against gun control, and their slogan is "We want to save children's lives." <laughs> what? <laughs> what the fuck? The I layers, the layers of irony are just unbelievable. Aren't they? The layers of irony are just mad. It's bonkers. It's absolutely bonkers. The shit that people are coming out with and. Uh, what people are buying into it, it, it doesn't, it never ceases to amaze me. Come on, let's have our guest back on. What you've got to say, come on, guest. Guy, Owen. Oh, well, I, I, I still can't remember your full name, you know. I think I've got this fucking block on. <laughs> Just, like, like I was saying at the top of the show, it, 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 it's one of those. I, I see it here. I'm just moving into the light so you can see me. Um, Owen, move into the light, brother. <laughs> yeah, actually, we're not bothered about seeing you. <laughs> no, the, actually, the sunset was perfect, Owen. That was absolutely bloody gorgeous for those on the radio that can't see it like the ones on Facebook. Owen, would you not say things like that when I've just took a big mouthful of beer? <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, I see it all the time um, when I look at foreign news. I don't I don't watch the BBC. I don't watch ITV. I've not watched a soap opera in God knows how long. Um, I see the country deteriorating. You know, like I say, I follow I still follow everything that's going on in the UK with the group. You know, um, Dave Witcher. People have got to start listening to this guy as well because he he's just doing stuff that is, you know, the dragons the, the amazing set of people trying to fight for your rights. Yeah, the, the, everybody's working in, in specific areas like that, yeah. Isn't it? That, exactly. That. And that's, that's, that, if you remember, Paul, I, I can remember say, saying it, it, it needs all these individual groups now. I mean, but going back to the days when I was at the Freedom Advocate with uh, Colonel, the, the Colonel, Dave Sanders, and yeah. uh, Danny, the Bampling. Yeah. And we, and we, or we tried to get the, the, the no party started. Yeah. You know, to, to stand and the no party is still going. You know, you can still find them online. It's just to yeah. help all the, the independent, um, uh, potential independent MPs. Um, 
it, 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 it's heartbreaking seeing it because if like I was saying, you know, I, I, I did, I, yeah, I did, but I did my time working for the DWP. But after leaving the DWP, I spent some time helping people get off sanctions because yeah. you know, I, 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 I saw where where, where that's headed. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> Who is this? Who is this guy? That's Colin. Colin, good evening. <laughs> <laughs> We couldn't, we couldn't, let's face it, I, I mean, we can't be called raconteurs news without a raccoon in this house, can we? Absolutely, absolutely. My apologies, my apologies. But yeah, I mean... It, it, our, our show is named after his poo. Trouble is, trouble is, Colin's always got something rammed up his arse. I don't know if that's something to do with Jason or what. <laughs> For those just listening and not watching, Colin, the raccoon, is a glove puppet. Yeah, he's not a real raccoon. No raccoons are injured during this he's, puppet. Let me just tell you this, he's not a real raccoon any longer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but he does smile a lot. Poor Colin. Poor he's Colin. my raccoon. I was saying anyway, sorry so, I interrupted you, uh, Owen. Go on, Owen. Um, I, I, it's like if you if you if you have some time to research things, instead of sort of calling people, and this is this is just me just so biased, you know, people need to research and look at things like like you were saying earlier, Paul. People love criticizing and 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 and, and disregarding what you're saying to them because they've never read it. Mm. So their opinion is of little value, and I, and, I, and I don't mean that disrespectfully, I mean that sincerely. It's of little value, because if you don't research the subject, how can you comment on it? Well, it, a, lot of my, a lot of my mates are, are rugby fans. No, it's the wrong shaped ball for me. I've never, ever been able to get into rugby. Even when I played it, I couldn't, I, I never enjoyed it. So for me to offer an opinion to my mates about a rugby match that they've been to, then... My opinion's not valid because I don't understand it. I don't get into it or anything like that. It's the same with those rugby lads who don't like football. They, we can talk about the game, but I wouldn't have an understanding about rugby. They'll be talking about all different technical points and things like that that I won't understand. And I get that with the stuff I talk about. People wouldn't understand some of the technical points. But the concept is very simple when you realise that it's a bankrupt economy and you're the creditor. You just don't, you never realise the potential of what power you've actually got. And it's all in that signature. But it's about declaring yourself alive legally. That is not saying, look at me, I'm here. It's about declaring yourself alive on paper. The, um, the BCG doing the Constitution stuff, trying to bring back um, jury trials because our jury trials, especially the local ones, I should be able to go to my local court now and say, Open the court, get the duty judge on duty. I've got a problem. That's how they meant to work. But all this centralisation and certainly going over to the Americanization of this civil fucking shit where you've got a rule and legislation for everything. The more rules, that's the only reason they use more rules is to hide more shit. And when you're looking through their stuff, don't play their game by trying to keep looking for stuff that will impress them or looking through legislation and using section point two point six uh, appendix a and all this kind of stuff unless it's the simple equation for me council tax commercial property section three shows that there is property that could be exempt from non-domestic ratings non-domestic is commercial i don't live in a commercial property perhaps my property is exempt from council tax but they don't answer you and it doesn't matter where you go, I've gone all the way to the Valuations Tribunal and they still won't or can't answer you because they'll put people in front of you who are complete idiots who are not meant to be able to help you. I rang the Law Society. I could not speak to anybody legally trained at the Law Society. They offered to put me in touch with solicitors for advice, but they couldn't give me anybody to speak to because they said, we don't offer legal advice. I said, I'm not after advice. I want to speak to somebody legally trained. No, we don't have anybody here. The law society with nobody legally trained. That is, That just says it all. It's, it's like going into a county court for a hearing that you can't be heard in. It's all fucking, it's all, it's all ridiculous. But 
if if you don't mind, Owen, it, ch changing tack slightly because I know you've been through some, shall we say, devastating stuff as well. But you were talking about learning. You was in getting into psychology and stuff like that because you needed to get an understanding of, of yes. um, balance back into your life. And I know you've given you've given us some uh, cracking compliments that when you were was at, shall we say, a low ebb that listening to this stuff has given you a bit more of a, you know, it's reignited that that spark that was was dimming. You know, when you when everything's because I've been I've been there, Owen. When everything starts to close in on you, and yeah. when it gets into a close, you, you you get closed in, and then you think, right, I don't want to go anywhere now. I'm just going to stay here. I'm going to everything will be okay. Everything will be okay. And then bit by bit you get prodded, and then you know. So if you, if you can you know, go into that as much as you, or as little as you like. Well, it's, 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 it, I can, I can really only just sum it up in, 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 in one word, really, is that, is that I've been awoken. I've woke up. Yeah. And, and that's in the sense that, that, that it's something that we, that we spoke about, you know, I'm, I'm now here on my own for those people that, 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 that don't know I'm, I'm now living here on my own and, and, and surviving on my own and getting on with it um, my marriage has broken down and and what has helped me apart from and, and one of the main things is after listening to the guy every opportunity I can so I'm, I'm keeping my my my, uh, my fingers in the pies as it were but I've, I've actually been doing a lot of, a lot a lot of studying um, because my mind was was for a whole month I kept it to myself I didn't say anything to anybody about about what's happened um and then when i did that helped because I, I i then noticed that albeit i'm out here in portugal on my own is that people can disrespect facebook you know and say you don't really have friends but at the time when i needed somebody and it was four o'clock in the morning they were there and one by one throughout the day more and more people more and more which for me, uh, uh, being in a place that, that I, I don't know the language that well, um, not being able to travel and literally being here, not being able to go anywhere, it was a revelation for me to, to have that many people that was looking out for me and making sure I was all right because I was at my lowest, at my very, very lowest, if you can imagine. I'm not going to go into any details, obviously, and I, I don't want to do that. No, I was, yeah. I, I was at a very, very low, low point. But if it weren't for you guys and, and, and all my friends, you know, it's all over the place, not just the UK. Mm. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I've, I've started as well. I put a message on Facebook about, about a month or so ago um, for asking people just to put down the keyboard for, for, for half an hour and write me a letter. Yeah, you did. I remember and, seeing that. And, that. and that's twofold, that, because it, it, it won... It gets you away from the screens for a bit. And two, it helps me when I'm sat down here thinking, you know, what am I going to do next? I know I've got loads of books and stuff to read behind me. There are lots of things there. But, you know, it's just things like that. And, it, and it's, keeping, it's keeping my mental state above that tipping point. I'm not saying that I'm going to drop into it any minute at all, but it's kept me, it's kept me there. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, you, every, you need that plateau, if you like. You know, when you've... When you've climbed and climbed and climbed, and then you think, hey, do you know what? This is going to be good. And then all of a sudden, somebody fucking chops you off at the knees and you fall down. Then it's very easy when, you, when you're falling, even though you're trying to grab on, it's very easy, because I've been there, Owen, to look down at where you're falling and just think, do you know what? What's the point? What's the point? Yeah. To tr What's the point to fighting? Do you know what? I'll just let go. You know, I've been at that point, armed police, all that kind of stuff, for no apparent reason, at the very least, sat in an empty house with me head in my hands, only my dog no, pushing my hands out the way, saying, I'm here, Dad, you know, don't worry, I'm here. When you're at that point, it's, it's... I think what we should do, I think we should start going positive. We've got about 23 minutes left. We don't want to leave fucking listeners wanting to top themselves by fucking, I don't know, Showing a, 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 a one of them umbrellas that you have in cocktails down the penis. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I thought we, we wanted... started the show with that. I thought we started the show with that. I just, I think we should, uh, we we should talk about some some lighter issues and uh, and perhaps go. Ada, go on, give us some of mate. 
Well, I was going to do a knob joke, but I won't. Um, I, just... <laughs> I, I just wanted to get back to something that Owen said earlier about um, not wanting to be part of a community, and it's because, well, partly because the, the people that were supposed to be helping him were the ones that were actually the ones who were going to be making some money off him if they got half the chance. Yeah. And in, in the research and the experience that I've had with the people in Thailand... There's numerous companies out in uh, Thailand who were sort of advertisers helping the expats with their visas and things like that. And and, it, and and as I understand it, it really is quite simple. You move there on a three-month visitor's visa. In the first 30 days, you need to chuck, well, the equivalent of about 20,000 quid in a Thai bank account. There are three or four other things you can do instead like you, you, you've got to have income of a certain amount, but um, the easy one is just chuck twenty grand if you've got it in a in a Thai bank account, and then towards the end of that ninety days, providing you've had that money in a Thai bank account for sixty days, you can then go on to have a, a annual but three month rolling retirement visa. As simple as that. But there are companies out there set up. Or chiefly run by uh, expats, English people, to supposedly help you through the process. But the people who actually help you, uh, the Thai people who just say, oh, don't worry about it, um, we'll get a taxi bike down to the office and we'll do it for you. Mm. For nothing. You know, the, the Thai people will just take you down to the uh, right office They'll do all the Thai bits, say, oh, you just need to sign that, sign that. And that's the end of it. It's the actual expats who are the ones who are trying to milk it for what there is. I would I would say that. I think, I think you're going to get that anyway. I mean, I've, I've just recently unfriended somebody on Facebook. Um, they randomly sent me a friend's request. Um, and me being a, a person, well, it's, an English, it's an English person in the UK, okay, befriended them, I accepted it wasn't until a couple of weeks later. And incidentally, this, this friend's invite came probably two weeks after the relationship had broken down. Yeah, that's all I'm going to say about that. But I've now, now found out that this woman that sent me the friend's request was somebody that owns a second-hand uh, shop in the area. So she literally finds out people that are splitting up because it does happen. It does happen regardless of where you go. Relationships break down no matter what country you are. But this woman phones in on people that relationships have broke down so she can buy furniture from them. So you're going to get that. I, I would trust the locals. Trust the locals. Ask the locals. Yeah. Because they'll know they live there. You know what I mean? Yeah. The next people that live there. I mean, I'm quite lucky in that the, uh, the, the place that I'm looking to go live at, and as I say, I'm going to be staying there for just shy of a week when I go back this time is owned by an English guy. Uh, in fact, a lot of people probably know who he is. Brian Jacks, the guy who uh, was the judo world champion, Olympic oh. champion. Um, he's got a Thai wife, and basically he just says, um, anybody can live here, but it is chiefly... He's got 62 apartments. It is chiefly um, expats. His wife's Thai, and if anybody's got any problem with anything, she'll take them to whatever local office, sort it out from, bring them back and... That's it. It's just, you know. It doesn't sound like you've got any problems there, really. I mean, that's, that's the best way, isn't it? Somebody, somebody that's there, somebody that's local, somebody that, that, that knows it. Yeah. I mean, there's no, there's no point going anywhere. We were, we were fortunate by this place because the Portuguese people could speak good English and they could understand, you know, they could understand English. Mm. So I, in any country that I, I would advise is get somebody that, that can speak your language but can convey what you need to, 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 to be said in the language of that country. Mm, mm. I, I, I have um, experience of a, a, cl a close friend who bought um, property on uh, Rhodes, one of the Greek islands. And I do know that nothing gets built, nothing gets granted, nothing gets a license, and uh, nothing absolutely gets done without the local mayor has got um, uh, some cash grease in his palm. Wow. Well, Absolutely nothing gets done. That, that's it, isn't it? From the government all the way down. Yeah. It just 
everybody's after taking a little piece. It, it, it's that, but it, it's the pitfalls. It's, it's the pitfalls. It's the things that you have to look out for, isn't it? You know. Yeah, and you know, at the end of the day, all we can do is all you know try and walk the uh, the path that we want to take. And all I know at the minute is that um, here in England, um, like you, I just see things getting worse and worse and worse, and I just want out. Yeah, exactly that. I I, I couldn't. I couldn't come back to the UK. I could not do a nine to five ever again. My health is better. I'm 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 well and truly in connection with Mother Nature here. You know, I've got it all around me. I don't I don't have to have the TV on. If I want to see something really nice, I can just step out and look out the window. Yeah. You know, and I, it, 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 my health is is better for it. I don't have the stress of being stuck in a, a, a queue of traffic. Um, yes, I do have to worry about forest fires, but I don't have to worry about heavy snow blocking me in. Jason, Jason and Eddie don't have to worry about forest fires. They're felling loads of trees in Sheffield and arresting women for blowing vavuzelas. I've been following that as well. That's been going for some while, but they've, they've, they've started to really enforce it now by cutting down all these trees. It's amazing, isn't it, that these people, are, the, 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 they're in a well-to-do area and... and We'll speak up about the trees, but once again, I remember, I remember listening to you the other night. What about the fracking that's going on and everything else? There's more to it than it, than, than it devaluing your property. You know well, what? If, the, you know there is not, a, there is a lot of thinking now about the uh, the trees um, that they're actually being felled because uh, when the five G goes in, the high trees actually uh, interfere with it. Apparently so, yeah. Wow. Yeah, so, so it's 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 not just the pavements and you know getting motor mobility scooters down the path and it's not just the um, the fact that the these obviously very mature trees have got really long roots. It's and been suspended today, though, hasn't it? The, the um, yeah, the, it has, yeah. Uh, it's been suspended today, apparently. Uh, so, right. um, the Sheffield Council released a statement to say what was uh, going on. I'm, I'm on a couple of Facebook groups, and I'd suggest anybody. Uh, go on to these. Uh, I think it's called Stag Sheffield Trees. Some are, some are, but it ends up being Stag when you you make it into a, a, an acronym. So um, yeah, Sheffield Trees. It's a it's really big issue. But you know what we're getting as well is we're getting people um, who are in this these groups, and I've seen these people in these groups, and these people are are. Uh, for, for the most part, they're mostly older people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, the probably middle class. Now they're getting a lot of stick for that. I, you know, when 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 you've got mid, middle class people, uh, older middle class people coming out for a cause and and doing a peaceful protest, I think that's something that should be roundly applauded. Oh. Whereas. Uh, all yeah. they seem to be getting is is it's this nimby not in my backyard, and uh, 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 this sort of situation, uh, and th this is the only way, and, and it's it's all a bit green and it's a bit fluffy and it's a bit uh, yogurt knitting and it's a bit, you know, that that's the perception that that that's been given out, but it's not. These are good people, mm. and and the ironic thing was I I um. I replied to a tweet um, on, on, on Twitter. I don't go on Twitter very often because it's like we're just full of fucking dickheads in it, for fuck's sake. How many and times? You can, you, you can only Brexit. put so many characters Stop as well. Brexit. Stop <laughs> Brexit. We've already fucking got Brexit. Fuck <laughs> off. And you know what? If I end up with a fucking blue, just out of Brexit, if all I end up with is a fucking blue passport, then I'm going to come round. I'm going to kick fucking shit out of you and little fucking Horatio and fucking all your little fucking shit. Because you, you fucking dumb me out of being, being able to be fucking sovereign and that. So, you know, we, we, we're getting all this fucking shit. And it, it, we're on, uh, on, um, uh, on Twitter and shit. Do, do you know what the fuck, it, what Sheffield Council, this is right in the middle of all this uh, stuff that's going on where there's people, middle class people, and these people are getting shit because there's, the, you know, the, the people they say, no, you're just middle class, you're just doing this, you're just doing that, and you're, you're because of that, it's all because of this. I'm trying to say fucking trees. 
And at the same time, Sheffield Council, right, tweeted that they were uh, committed to cleaning the air in the city centre while they're cutting all fucking trees down. <laughs> Put all fucking trees down. Uh, well, hang on a minute. Calm down, so you don't want that, do you? No, no, that's not. We don't want that. We prefer oxygen. Right, but fucking trees. Carbon <laughs> dioxide and release oxygen. Why are you cutting them down? Like um, AD said, it's it's the five G thing. The five G, the leaves uh, uh, and all the foliage. It, it interferes, and and do you know what? for that reason, I, it you is know what I see that as you know, what I see that as I see that as Mother Nature protecting us. Yes, I agree. I agree. But is it? Is it? Do you think they say it's interfering with the signal, or do you think it's 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 draining? The, the, the waves that it's sending out. Well, apparently, apparently what it does, when, when they get raindrops on the leaves and there's all that moisture hanging in the tree, and, I mean, the, the, God knows how many gallons of water you can have hanging in a tree on a rainy day. It must be a lot. Um, and apparently it just puts up like a big shield for yeah. the 5G. Yeah, that, yeah, I believe... Because the higher the frequency, the, well, yeah. you know, the shorter the distance and the shorter the radio wave, so apparently that's what it is, but I, yeah, I, <laughs> hey, listen, I'm not an expert, and if anybody's got any info, then we'll do it. Yeah, please. But another reason what I heard was that, it, uh, you know, this network's going to start killing trees, so they're taking trees down that are going to show evidence of possibly yeah. dying anyway, so they're trying to say we're getting rid of dying trees, but they are actually felling really good trees. I mean, Jason, would it, does it make you feel any better that if we do eventually leave as Brexit, does it make you feel any better that the French are going to print your nice blue passport? <laughs> do you know what? I'm He's off. He's off. He's off. Go on. Go on. You know what? You know what that means? That means that, that we're trading with another nation. We're not with them. We're not in an alliance with them, but we're trading with another nation. They're doing something for us. And we're trading. That's a trade agreement. That, well, we're you know, paying them to print it. Can we not print it ourselves? This, this, this fucking hard... This, the, you see, we, 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 we should be trading. I don't... I, to be fair, I couldn't give a fuck whether it's fucking made in England or it's fucking made in Britain or it's made in France or it's made in fucking Germany. I think they were running as well. I couldn't give a fuck. I really couldn't give a fuck. If we've got blue passports, that means... We've started getting out of Europe. Now, I know the fucking fucked us over on fisheries, but, but if we all fucking stick together and, and we allow it and we allow, uh, sorry, if we all stick together and we block all the rest of the shit that they're trying to fucking do to us, then the fisheries thing is, will, will be done as well. Will will be trying to fuck us. That's they haven't fucked fuck. us. They haven't fucked us on the fisheries. We've given it. We've not. They've not fucked us. We've given it. Just on it. I, Listen. Just it, the it on the plate. Yeah, I believe we've we've given it. We, we, there's no fucking us. They can't it. fuck us. They can't make us give it them. We've given it. We we could have did. We could have cleared all this up. But yes, I agree with the trading agreement. But we're going to waste money. I mean, I think it was. I'm going off the top of my head here. It was something like going to cost 498 million to print these passports, and we're going to pay somebody else to do that when we could do it, and that money could be used elsewhere. That money could be feeding fucking homeless people instead of people who have been homeless who have got themselves back on the right track and actually haven't had to go out and do this for themselves. It's 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 unbelievable to me. This EU bollocks is it, it's just it's. We're going to be sucked in to. Can, can, can you remind them about 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 uh, Theresa May's Brexit plans? What what has she really given the UK? What are the UK getting? Because to, to me, if 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 I mean, this is not me for and against, it's like a devil's advocate, if you will. Um, if, if if you if the UK is coming out of Europe, yeah. What infrastructure has she got in place to start getting those seasonally adjusted figures? You know, the unemployment figures that they say have always gone down, where all it is is actually people just going on courses or jobs for six months and then being, you know, zero hour contracts and everything else. What has she, what has she got in place to start the industries going? When is Sheffield going to get the steel back? When are they going to open up the coal mines again? When are they going to give the utilities back to the people? All the things Fuck that matter. Do you understand Fuck what I mean? All. 
Fuck all of them. What, what, what's in place for the UK people? What, what, you know, I, I agree with everything else. I agree with it all. I, you know, it, what is in place for, 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 for the unemployed? What's in place for the elderly? Is it going to strengthen them? This is what I'm, I'm not, you know, all I'm just saying to you is that in the UK, you're being, you're being bombarded with this, this, that, and the other events, yeah, let's say, to distract you with all the, all the things that they're passing in Parliament under your noses. And I hear see, all this. What, what they're doing, right, what they're doing is they're removing money from, uh, from, from public sector, right, and they're moving it into the private sector. And what they're saying is, is that they're destroying all the infrastructure that we've got. They're destroying it and saying, look, we can't do it anymore. Look, there's no money. There's no money. There's no money. But yet it, we're going to, what we're going to do is we're going to get a, a private company in to do that particular job. And they're going to charge us twice as much. And, and who are the directors of those companies? MPs. Exactly Civil that. service. Exactly. Civil service. Exactly that. Hey, Dave, go on, mate, go on. Jump Brexit in, mate. is a smokescreen. It's one a smokescreen because... Government. One because, world government, part one. Yeah, yeah, because, listen, if we'd have stayed in Europe, or if we do stay in Europe, because they're still fucking debating that now, but if we stay in Europe, one world, one step closer to one world government... If we come out of Europe and we get all these trade agreements all across the world, we're one stage closer to one world government. So the mm -hmm. path is different. The destination is the same. I've right. got a cracking idea. Let's teach everybody about the bills of exchange. Let's tell everybody that money ain't fucking real. And let's just ignore the politicians and all the other shit out of fucking existence. That's just let men that's... be men, women yeah. be women, LGBT and any other fucking... Um, letter you can think of be whatever they want everybody love everybody and whatever kind of anarchy comes out of this is going to be a fucking sight closer to utopia than all this political fucking debt based shit that we've got now spot on mate that's that's why politics has had its day politics it's just, is dead it's just fucking bollocks there to confuse you that's all yeah. it is I agree mm -hmm. All right, well, we've only got a few minutes left, so what I want to do is I want to give the uh, last two minutes to our guest for this evening, uh, Owen. Um, so if you just want, if, you, if there's anywhere people can find you, uh, let us know any websites that you're affiliated to, um, it, it, where can people find you on Facebook? I've po we've posted your Facebook profile a couple of times on, on Facebook Live tonight, and I know there's a few people that are wanting to get in touch with you for some advice on, uh, on moving uh, abroad and getting off the grid and everything. So just, uh, we're, 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 well, I mean, we're not really restricted by time, but I want you to give me a couple of minutes. Oh, anything you want to say at the end of this show? It's been a, 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 an absolutely fantastic show, um, and I've really enjoyed it. But uh, I think we should give the last couple of minutes to you. So uh, uh, away you go. No problem. So, well, listen, guys, once again, thank you very, very much for giving me the opportunity to come on. Um, it, it's, been, it's been amazing. Um, you can find me on, on, on Facebook. Um, the, there should be my name on the page on, on the uh, Rapid Spurs news page. I do, I've just set up actually um, an Arishella farm page as well on Facebook. And that's me just putting in little videos of little jobs I've done and how the garden's coming on. Um, hopefully, like I said earlier on, I'm hopefully going to set up a B&B. &B. Um, if anybody wants to come out and have a look and, and stay for a chill out and uh, just come and sit back and kick back and relax. You're very welcome to come and join me. Just drop me a line, either on the Irish Shell Farm page or, or whatever. Cheap flights over here to Portugal. Come and join us. Eat some good food. Have a good laugh. Have a good smoke. Just have a good time. Guys, thank you very, very much, and I'll be listening in tomorrow night. Can't wait for that show. Thank you very much. God bless you. Brilliant. Thank you very much to our guest, uh... Owen, uh, uh, and, and to everybody who's listened tonight, it's been great in the chat room and it's been great on uh, Facebook Live as well, people. Uh, many comments, there's been too many to read out, really. I, I really the, the, the conversation flowed so much that we were on different tangents and down different uh, areas. Um, so I, I really didn't get much time. But if uh, if people want to read the comments, you can uh, uh, go to raconteursnews.com and just sign up there and uh, you'll be able to get yourself 
a, a an account in the chat room, have a look at what people were saying in there, and also on the Facebook Live uh, feed as well. So, uh, big thank you to everybody this evening. Big thank you to Owen for uh, being our guest this evening and, and showing us some of the great shots that we've had tonight. Um, uh, the sunset, particularly, uh, were, were beautiful. And sorry for anybody that were listening on Spreaker or on raconteursnews.com and wasn't watching on Facebook Live, but there were some uh, spectacular views that we, we got from Owen on his uh, on his feed. A uh, big thank you to uh, Paul, uh, Bills of Exchange, Webster. <laughs> we love him. Uh, part, uh, an integral part now of Raconteurs News and also uh, seemingly coming back to being a, an integral part of Raconteurs News, aid uh, Captain Cliche Hardy. Hey, yo, yo, mate, thanks very much for joining us. Pleasure. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, are you coming on tomorrow? Uh, I'll pro I've got Rodney tomorrow night, so I'll be sat with a fluffy dog on my knee. All right, we well, can listen, can't you? Yeah, yeah. You can listen, and you can you, you can be there, and uh, and we'll we'll drag you in at any point. Okay, um, how, how are we doing? We are guests for tomorrow night, Paul. Well, I've had a message off him today. Uh, my last message was into. Uh, I'll just read it. My last message was: Can you confirm? This was yesterday, Sunday. Can you confirm for Tuesday at seven? And I've got a message off him at quarter past ten this morning saying, oh, fucking hell, I'm absolutely shit, mate. Uh, I put his that a yes, and I'm still waiting for him to get back to me on that, so... All right, I'll, well, I'll, I'll, ping, I'll ping him again tonight, don't worry. I suppose we'll be, we'll be able to get something done anyway, won't we? And uh, a, bit, a big thank you to you as well, Andy, uh, my, of course, my uh, most trusted companion... When it comes to uh, radio broadcasting, uh, um, have you enjoyed it this evening? Thanks for having me, mate. Brilliant. And thanks to well, Owen as well. Owen, you're a star, man. Yeah, top lad, Owen. Keep up the great work. There's a lot of good, lot of hard work gone into that, mate. And if um, I can get hold of a passport and they'll let me leave this fucking country, I may just come over for a visit. Soon, it won't let you fucking back in again. No, no, I'm, I'm pretty. I'm, you know, there's there's a many a true word spoken in jest. Very well, Paul. I will talk to you next on April the fourth. Is it April the fourth, Liverpool, Man City, or is it sooner? Oh, well, I think you could be right. I, I think one of us might be crying, but I'll shake your hand at the end, no matter what, son. Um, I, I, I wish each of you get the same result as I got against Super Leeds' side uh, a couple of weeks ago when uh, Sheffield Wednesday beat them 2-1. You said um, you weren't going to bring that up again, Jason. <laughs> We're at the end of the show. It's been absolutely fantastic. It's been a great show. Uh, thank you to everybody who's listened. Uh, thank you to everyone in the chat room, everybody who's been watching on Facebook Live. Um, we're back tomorrow night. We may have uh, we may have Dan Bostock. We may not. If we don't, we will certainly have uh, we'll have somebody, or we'll certainly be doing something. So uh, we'll see you again tomorrow night. And uh, don't forget Jeremy Bamba campaign. Keep up with that, and uh, we'll see you. I'm gonna have some fun with this one here. Woohoo! In the morning, when I wake up, all I want is marijuana. In the evening, when I'm thinking, all I want is marijuana. If you look in my eyes, you see what I. Every minute, every hour of every day But life is like a smoke In the end I'm gonna choke So all I do is live my life from day to day Oh my god,
You know you better watch your shabby Cause I know you're waiting on that one Cause I'm telling you call it a nun Cause you know the one that said Take them for a run You let me see you do that run Run at the one that they clan that the one that done Cause I know you can never be me now What you wanna do Cause I'm about to break it down Me cut that soul like Cause you know you cannot fade me now That you wanna You better back it down now Because I'm telling you What bomb bum bum Cause I can't have one now Because you know you like the way I put that pick up Cause I'm telling all your fools what I put up And in the mercy Now what you wanna do And in the mercy Now what you wanna do And in the mercy Now what you wanna do And in the mercy If you look in my eyes You'll see what I've done Every minute, every hour of every day But life is like a smoke In the end, I'm gonna choke So all I do is live my life from day to day You got to lick it, stick it, bend it, crease it, stack it, burn it, pack it, roll it, poke it, roach it, smoke it, then you pass it to me You got to lick it, stick it, bend it, crease it, stack it, burn it, pack it, roll it, poke it, roach it, smoke it, then you pass it to me. Come on, baby girl, let's get it going on. I'ma hit the highway and do it my way. It ain't no game, girl, so I don't play games. I keep it up straight, right up in your face. So make your mind up, cause life is too short. I got the vest on, boy, put your belt on. Stop acting all cool, like Kanye West, boy. You be riding through the wire and the camera get on fire. You don't want that, no. I don't want that, no. These goes are to pimps and chicks, so slow, slow. Hit the back seat when you're doing the licking, kissing, squeezing. Do the damn thing, man. Yeah, you got to lick it, it, stick it, bend it, crash it, stack it, burn it, pack it, roll it, bone it, soak it, smoke it, yeah, rent it, you pass it to me. Yeah, you got to leave it, stick it, bend it, crash it, stack it, burn it, pack it, roll it, bone it, soak it, smoke it, yeah, rent it, pass it to me. Yeah, you got to lick it, stick it, bend it, crash it, stack it. Marriage, you want it to me.